So today's an overhead day. I'm gonna do, uh, instead of the regular speed work, I'm gonna do 70%, just try and hit it smooth. Because my overhead sucks, and I got a feeling it's because I'm so fucking imbalanced and so tight in my lats. But anyway, I'm gonna start warming up with this squat drill from Boris Shako, who, if you don't know, you should probably look him up. If you know anything about lifting, you should look up Boris Shako. It's kind of a big deal. I'm just trying to find a good camera angle here, here so you can see how bad I suck at this. This, maybe. There we go. All right. So, up against the wall, toes on the wall, get your knees to your toes, but no further than. So, hands can be on the wall somewhere, but you're going to sit back and you're going to try and squat down. And let me tell you, it's not as easy as it looks. What do you think about the, um, you know, this, we talked about a little bit about speed work for the bench press and it transfers over well to raw and your lifting. What about speed work for the squat and for the deadlift? Uh, does it seem to transfer over to raw lifting? Yeah, I, I think it does. But like I said, it all comes back down. I mean, my philosophy on training is, is it all comes back down to what you need. So for me, um, I was always an explosive deadlifter and I was always an explosive squatter. And I don't have to train speed work with that nearly as much because I already have it. So I've slowed everything back down and tried to just get that grinding strength in the back. And, uh, or not back, or just increase it. So I think so, it depends there you on go. what you need. A couple of sets of those, two or three times a week. I'm gonna try and just do it every day because it's also good for uh, loosening up the hips a little bit. So get it done. So bad taste, but they would have never let me in the military anyway from my legs being fractured or whatever. But I, I like to be able to get back because what I do is I go in there and I'll think of it as a job. I go in there and work with those guys because I'm thinking if I can get them 5, 10, 20 percent stronger, what if that tenth of a second, that little bit of extra power saves their ass? And yeah. now, like I was talking about to you more earlier, like those guys, we, we like to see guys get stronger and it's really cool. But when you, I've had guys come back when I work with Rangers and they were going to get sit out on missions constantly because they didn't get out really work on the night too. So I don't know how they got all that they needed. And I don't know how many guys came back definitely like in tears That's when you're just like, huge eye over your sight's powerful. Holy shit. Like, it feels better than breaking the world record. Oh, I mean, when, when those three guys said, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.
Last set, sixth set, up six. Might admit, I didn't record the last one. So here's the thing, doing stuff like that, you set out with a goal. I want to do six sets of six, strict, you know, clean and press. So every rep, even when it starts really sucking, you're gonna, pause, you're gonna clean the rep, pause it at your chest, all the way down on your chest, because the world's strongest man, Brian Shaw, says to put the weight on your chest and always start from the most range of motion you have and that's what you're gonna do because um, we have other stuff like the log and the axle where you're gonna get a greater or a lesser range of motion and just stick with it even when it starts sucking you might need to take a longer break or get your spot of there because you shouldn't be like me and working out by yourself I'm on a fucking different breed so get the work done rounds of that.
All right, so the point of that last exercise I just did is obviously hip and rib spinal stabilization. A lot of people call that ab work, but it truly is stabilization because it's more than just your abdominal practice. So the idea is to keep your low back flat into the ground, so you teach yourself how to brace the ribs and keep them from pulling away from the hips. That's called anti-extension. Something where you're preventing the hips and ribs from twisting, it's called anti-rotation. Both of these, these exercises I did tonight with the planks and stuff are anti-extension and anti-rotation. You need to do these in order to maintain a positive posture and train this corset of muscles that we have in a fashion as to which they're meant to be used.